Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Rajesh Rao, who is the Managing Director of Technology at Temis. Temis was established to accelerate the digital transformation of leading enterprises and public sector agencies in Singapore and beyond through holistic transformation enabled by technology. Rajesh joins us today to tell us more about Temis and what approach Temis is taking to the challenges in the industry. Thank you for coming along, Rajesh, and welcome to the Jam. Tom, thank you for having me on the Jam, and I look forward to discussing Temis's cloud value realization, which addresses some of the challenges which you discussed before. Well, let's get straight into it then. What are the key challenges technology executives are facing during the digital transformation and application modernization journey? Tom, this is a very important question. And to answer this, I'll give you a little bit of background. Yeah? So boards around the world have realized that digital is fundamental and critical to future business. And it is not a nice to have, nor is it an afterthought to be bolted upon an existing enterprise. In fact, COVID accelerated these trends because enterprises had to go digital. They had to offer online services and accelerate their digital implementation to ensure customers get access to the services. In fact, today I can think of three more reasons for large enterprises to accelerate their digital transformation. The first reason is there's a lot of pressure from digital disruptors who have come in and leveraged open source technologies and they're taking away a lot of the customers using innovative tools and technologies. The second reason for enterprises is that they should be building their own digital platforms and using these digital platforms, they should be able to you prevent the digital disruptors from getting an entry into the market. And the third big reason is the consumerization of user experience from smartphones and digital devices have led enterprise users to expect the same look and feel in the ERP and backend applications, which means technology executives need to upgrade their user experience. And to do that, they have to take care of their legacy businesses and ensure that they, it gets say, transformed using all these digital technologies. <laughs> Well, I guess now, what has the, been the journey to cloud and did enterprises benefit from cloud migration initiatives? This is a important question because uh, different enterprises had different journeys. And uh, when I talk to a lot of the C-level executives, I find it can be divided into three different choices. The first choice is a lift and shift where you take applications from on-premises, lift as it is, and then put it onto the cloud. The second option is hollow out the core, where you take a legacy application, but then you just take out a few functionalities, which are business critical functionalities, and use a pattern which is called a strangulation pattern, and ensure that over a period of time, the core becomes smaller, and some of these services become more and more digital. The third one, which is most complex and technically very difficult, but provides the most benefit is to re-architect and redevelop core applications using microservices architecture. Mm -hmm. Now, what I have seen is a significant number of technology executives have taken the path of least resistance and they have embarked on a lift and shift approach. Mm -hmm. Existing applications were directly moved into cloud environments and there was no assessment whether digital transformation benefits the accrued to the organizations or not. Over the last three years, this has resulted in cloud environments legacy, running legacy applications, and it has led to the following challenges. The first challenge is business is still frustrated because new product innovations are not delivered rapidly and time to market is slow. The second challenge is costs have increased instead of reducing because the power of cloud scaling is not leveraged in an actual lift and shift. And the third challenge is uh, digital native competitors are winning more and more customers because they are born digital, the entire process leverages the best of solutions uh, offered by hyperscalers and they're more innovative. So today there's a situation where a lot of the applications have been moved to the cloud, but the benefits of the cloud have not been translated into enterprises and the C-level executives are faced with a challenge about what to do next. Well, I guess part of that challenge could be solved by you. Uh, what is Temis's approach to cloud uh, digital transformation and cloud modernization? Yeah, you're right. Uh, Temis was actually established to solve this particular problem. Mm. And as you said at the beginning, mm. you know, Temis's main focus is to accelerate digital transformation of leading enterprises and public sector agencies. And Temis was established in April 2021 by Temasek in partnership with UST, which is a global digital services firm 
So we have best of both the worlds. We have access to a large digital services capabilities, as well as we have to access to uh, local challenges and local market presence. Mm -hmm. When Timas was started, we created the vision to value framework to solve digital transformation challenges. Vision to value framework not only creates a big picture vision and roadmap, but also implements the solution to create real business values for end customers. Mm -hmm. As I said before, large enterprises have found themselves at a crossroads mm -hmm. and they, they now need to define what exactly is the next step. Mm -hmm. Existing lift and shift approach mm -hmm. will continue to cause more and more challenges mm -hmm. and it's not the right way to go forward. Instead, a new thinking is required. So what Timas did was we took the visual to value framework and we incorporated unique cloud modernization challenges, which I explained before, and we came out with a solution. And that solution is called as cloud value realization. And the cloud value realization focuses on efforts, which should be translated to actual business objectives. For example, at the end of it, business should be able to increase customer satisfaction or add new customers or increase revenues or reduce costs. By doing these real business value activities, more and more of these transformation initiatives can be taken and they generate more funds, which can be used to fund more digital transformation initiatives, which becomes a positive self-reinforcing cycle. So cloud re value realization enables enterprises to digitally transform using agile methodologies and move towards a minimum viable product within a few sprints, instead of waiting for multiple years, waiting for a big bang and the transformation, which doesn't lead to kind of a, any kind of a good results at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. By doing this small chunks, the IT team will be able to prove to business that modernization is actually generating business value and it's generating benefits. And this one can be used to go back and then modernize on more and more complex legacy applications. Well, I guess now, what trends are your product development teams laser focused on? So Themus is focused on delivering value using the cloud value realization framework. And the cloud value realization starts by assessing the existing legacy applications. And to do that, we use uh, well-known external tools uh, where we sniff out all the applications which are there in the enterprise. And uh, we have seen many a times enterprises have multiple silo applications in different departments and all of them are performing similar business functionality. Mm -hmm. So the most important uh, step is to rationalize the portfolio and consolidate the number of applications. Mm -hmm. By doing this, Timus has witnessed application portfolio to be shrunk by at least 40 to 50%, okay? which is a big step forward. So instead of taking all these applications and moving it onto the cloud, the first step is reduce your application footprint by 40 to 50%, then make the next decision. The next decision is to use the different criteria, which I mentioned before, in terms of, is this application easy to modernize? Are business benefits generated? Mm. And there will be multiple other criteria for each of the enterprises. And we work with the enterprise to jointly define what are these criteria? What are the business objectives? And based on this, we define what is a prioritization matrix. Mm. Once we have the prioritization matrix, then team as the engineering team comes in and they, they determine what should happen to the applications. Mm. And typically we use a, a model which is called 7R, which is an industry standard. And 7R stands for rehost, replatform, refactor, re-architect, repurchase, relocate, retire, or retain. So there are a lot of app options as you can see over here. So once you have defined what is your application state, what are the business benefits it will get, what are the technology challenges, we have different app options in terms of how you can take it and then leverage the power of cloud and they make sure that each of the applications are treated uniquely based on their unique characteristics. Finally, what Timas does is say we go in and we build a digital native infrastructure. Mm. And this infrastructure consists of, a, of course, cloud, then it consists of a containers, DevSecOps, pipelines, automation, and day to run operations. Customers are also very closely involved in this journey. And the idea is once we set up this infrastructure, the customers can use this infrastructure to build more digital native applications on top of this infrastructure. And they are more and more independent in their cloud journey. The last thing I want to highlight is the teams, they rely a lot on the cloud hyperscalers and the cloud hyperscalers come out with a lot of innovations. And our team work very closely to understand what is that innovation, 
bring that innovation in-house and also take that innovations to the customers so that we can drive higher business agility. So combining all these things, we come in and then we add a lot of business values to the customers by incorporating the new cloud technologies. Well, I guess my next question would ask, what experience and resources do you have in the Asia Pacific market? The team in the last two years has grown significantly. And we have deliberately taken an approach of working with select customers to prove this concept and making sure that we have a strong foundation and a strong base. I'll give you a few examples. We worked with a large insurance company in the region and we developed a cloud native super application. And the idea of this super application is how can an insurance company get their customers to continuously engage with the insurance company itself? Because if you see insurance, typically the touch points for the customer is first time you buy an insurance, then second time is when you have to go and then claim something. And the third time is when you have to renew the insurance. So the application which we developed they made sure that the customers keep coming back to the insurance company for various other things in terms of how can your wellness be maintained, how can you be more healthy, and then what are the various other interesting things people are doing by creating a community. The second thing we have done is say, for large enterprises in the region, we have done migrations and that migrations is from existing on-premises data centers into hyperscalers. And the, the methodology, which I mentioned in terms of understanding the applications, defining what are the various things to be done from a technical perspective, and then finally moving into a cloud-based infrastructure that has been successfully done. Mm -hmm. The third thing I would say is uh, we also have worked very closely with these hyperscalers. We brought their innovations and made sure that at the end of the day, the customers are driving business value using these innovations and ensuring that either their revenues are going up or their customers are increasing or their costs are coming down. Well, I guess to finish off, if an enterprise user wanted to engage with Teamus, what is the best way? Okay, so the best way is to reach out to me, go to www.teamus.com, our website, and get more information. Mm. Teamus is uh, very open in terms of engaging with customers. Eh? And we offer a service where we initially come in and we work to determine what are the challenges which are faced by enterprises and what are the various solutions. So this is even before we start a formal engagement. Eh? We bring in a team of uh, strategy consultants. We bring in a team of uh, technology architects. We bring in a team of data and AI experts. And all of them together, they look at uh, the problem statement from different angles and make sure that uh, the problem is solved from a holistic perspective. And this approach ensures that there are no surprises. Everyone is collaborating together. And there is an agile manage, which is used to ensure the business problems are solved together. So just reach out to us, and then we'll be happy to engage. Well, it has been a pleasure having you on the jam, Rajesh, and learning more about Temis and what you do. We look forward to hearing more from Temis in the near future. Yeah. Tom, thank you for your time. It was great talking with you on the jam and sharing how cloud value realization from Temas can accelerate digital transformation.